Progressive presents Forced Metaphors about bundling your home and auto. When you bundle your home and auto with Progressive, you get great savings and round-the-clock protection, which is as beautiful as looking your firstborn child in the eyes for the first time. Well, that's a bit much. Maybe it's more like looking your second-born child in the eyes for like the third or fourth time. Point being, the savings and round-the-clock protection are really, really magical. Forced Metaphors, presented by Progressive. Bundle and protect today. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Discount not available in all states or situations. It's Monday. It's January 17th. And the word of the day is Velcor, which means the strange wistfulness of a used bookstore filled with thousands of old books you'll never have time to read, each locked in its own era, bound and dated and papered over like an old room the author abandoned years ago. Used in a sentence, that wistful feeling of Velcor is actually your bowels moving, according to Eli. Hey, <laughs> you're darn right it is. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delay from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, the Supreme Court doesn't understand what a plague has to do with health or safety. Ah, <sighs> if you're an anti-vaxxer, you're in for a treat. I uh, should have stuck with just one urine. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom and Cecil will be here to make the improv around the news stuff look easy. <laughs> but first, a quick word from our sponsor. Hi, I'm Eli Bosnick. You know, with our friend, co-host, and meal ticket, no illusions, terribly sick with COVID-19 this week, I got thinking. I thought he was feeling much better. Cecil, you're killing the moment. In these difficult times when my business partner hangs on to life just by a tiny little thread. I, he's literally on VR right now. He just texted me to see if I want to play Swarm with him. By a thread. I realized how important life insurance is. Life insurance can give you peace of mind that if something happens to you, your loved ones would have a financial cushion to pay for things like rent, mortgage payments, loans, education costs, and the inevitable collapse of your podcasts into unedited, freeform improvs about whatever is grinding Heath's what? gears that week. I, I would edit them. Mm. Sometimes I would edit some of the, if it needed to be edited, I would edit it. Mm -hmm. That's why there's Policy Genius. Here's how it works. First, click the link in the description or head to policygenius.com and answer a few questions about yourself. In minutes, you can work out how much life insurance coverage you need and compare personalized quotes to find your best price. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. Their licensed experts will help you understand your options and apply for a policy. Plus, the Policy Genius team works for you, not the insurance companies, so you can trust them to offer unbiased help and advocate for you at every step until you're covered. Okay, that does actually sound good. So why not head to policygenius.com to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. Policy Genius, because my backup is selling magic tricks at a mall. Okay, well, at least you have a backup. So. I can ask for you at the mall. If you Thank you, to. actually. Yeah. I've been asking you for that. You guys' lives are so scary. Cecil, please. Yikes. Killing the mood again, Cecil. Yikes. Killing it. Joining me for headlines tonight is my fellow skeptic rat, Eli Bosnick. And we have a very special episode of Blossom this week. And that's because we're joined <laughs> by two <laughs> podcasting legends. You might know them from Everyone's a Critic, Cognitive Dissonance, and <laughs> The Dollop Copied Us. Tom and Cecil are here. <laughs> Thanks for having us, man. Thank you. Well, you know... Podcasting legends. Legends sounds good, but the podcasting modifier kind of takes the air right out of the time. Yeah, yeah. It really. It's, it's really really to place it. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know. Also, if you know Tom and Cecil from Everyone's a Critic, I want to know how you're consuming your media. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly. It's the original god awful movies. We copied all your stuff. That, yeah. that but you did it so much better. Copied. So it's worthwhile. <laughs> right. That's the key. All right, time for some headlines, guys. We're going to do talk this. about the news. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, we're going to start with some uh, bad news and then go from there. Let's start with... Oh, was there good news that you sent? Yeah, I, I, I didn't get that it, tab. I somebody seems to, to open imply that tab. some good news. We're going to do our best. <laughs> okay. We're going to stretch it. We're going to stretch it. But right. it starts bad because it starts with the Supreme Court, and that's mm. how it works now with the Supreme Court. They blocked 
the vaccination or testing requirement for large companies. That's blocked now. Yeah. They said the Occupational Safety and Health Administration is not allowed to administer occupational safety and health like that. <laughs> yeah. It's no, they're <laughs> fascist life saving and it's blocked, so they, they can't do it. They're just OA now. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> ridiculous. Well, part part of the rationale was that unlike like a hard hat, so like OSHA can make you wear a hard hat, even though the hard hat only protects you. You know, like it's not like the hard hat protects somebody else's fucking head from getting smashed by a falling <laughs> thing. But yeah. part of the part of the rationale, no shit, was that when you leave work, you can take the hard hat off, unlike <laughs> taking the vaccine out. But anti-vax people have told us now that you could just take a bath with borax and you can get the vaccine right out of there. So yeah. you're fine then. Yeah. Right. Good. Clearly they're misinformed is what I'm saying. Yeah, a, little, a little bit. And it's not it's not a requirement that you get vaccinated even. It's or right. test. Right. You can take off the test when you leave work. <laughs> That's nothing. <laughs> okay. Now I'm picturing some hick in Georgia with the fucking Q-tip tickling the back of his brain for his entire shift at Walmart. <laughs> My rights are being oppressed. <laughs> <laughs> Feels a little excessive. You're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the, they say here, they say the court has been supportive of state requirements targeting the pandemic, but skeptical of broad federal responses because mm. the, the the virus stops at every state line to make yeah, sure it's true. welcome. Yeah. It's like a vampire. You got to welcome yeah. it into your state. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it, it definitely it, it checks local restrictions before <laughs> exactly. it spreads. What, what, exactly. are the, what are the rules? I don't want to be. It's like a fucking like a house guest or whatever. OK, is this a shoe house or not a shoe house? I just I like to know in advance so I don't. Make it <laughs> yeah. And th this is the Supreme Court. These are supposed to be like highly intelligent, like word nerds mm. who understand what that all means. And they said that COVID is an occupational hazard. Like if you're working at a hospital, that counts because they did allow the requirement for yeah. healthcare workers being vaccinated yeah, yeah. in facilities that receive Medicaid and Medicare funds. That's allowed. To be clear, this is not like we half won and half lost with them this time. The, the one they blocked would have applied to 84 million yeah. people. The one they allowed only covers 10 million. But they did allow the rule for the healthcare sector. But they said that COVID's an occupational hazard only for that sector, meaning like it's just a regular hazard if you're working at Walmart <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. But that's yeah. like saying the helmet, th that's like saying, well, you could get, there's bricks everywhere that could hit you in the fucking head. So, you know, <laughs> that you could that could happen at home, so we're not going to make you wear helmets at home. So we're not going to make you wear helmets at work. I don't understand how these smart people don't understand how dumb that is. Yeah, they they that's exactly part of the the unbelievably bizarre reasoning. It, it, they they basically said, look, the only place you're going to catch COVID or could catch COVID isn't work. So because it's not a unique to work situation, but it's like, all right, well, I mean. Shit does fall on people's heads sometimes. Yeah. Like, it's not like the only way anyone ever gets bonked on the goddamn noggin is at work. But it's like, yeah, if I'm working a goddamn meatpacking facility, standing shoulder to shoulder with 10,000 other people on an open floor, it's a little more likely that I'm going to catch the COVIDs from that, right? There are chicken factories that had larger outbreaks than Ivy League universities. <laughs> like, like there are Purdue single Purdue buildings that outdid fucking <laughs> Cornell University. And they're like, yeah, but you know, it's not necessary to cough directly into the chicken you're packaging cold and <laughs> sending out to the homes of millions of Americans. So no, no well, and, and those were free range cage free workers, you know, imagine in the yeah, other. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And Fauci went to Cornell. It's very interesting what you said. Yeah, there, Eli. <laughs> yeah. I'm mates with Bill Gates. I heard. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but I have to talk about the meta thing about this SCOTUS ruling that makes me so fucking happy because it's a perfect metaphor for everything being broken. When they were d deciding the arguments and doing this, Gorsuch refused to wear a mask, <laughs> no. oh my which God, meant no. Sotomayor, his colleague, couldn't show up to work. She had to zoom in. So literally... As the words were coming out of his unprotected mouth that only healthcare was a dangerous job, 
his colleague wasn't there because he was actively endangering her life. <laughs> he might as well have been swinging around a sword on a chain. Just like, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Like an Whoa. Ouroboros of meta stupid. They like <laughs> somehow composed a symphony of don't look up by accident while they were doing this meta <laughs> joke they didn't realize was happening. <laughs> Terrifying. Also, they added one other thing. They said it might count as an occupational hazard if you work in a crowded or cramped environment. So, like, they, they allowed for, like, well, maybe if, like, a really tight coal mine wanted to make a rule about this, we'll allow that, depending. Or, like, literally any cube farm. Or, yeah. you know, I, I was thinking, like, the place I used to work until the pandemic hit and I sent everybody home. It was, like, a 12,000-square-foot cube farm. It's just... A hundred people packed in, breathing each other's air. When somebody got sick with a regular sickness, you could map out the call-ins that were going to happen over the next 10 days based on the cube of first sickness. <laughs> this is not complicated stuff. Like, hey, should we all breathe each other's air when the air is literally filled with contaminated poison? Would we call that a hazard? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I uh, Maybe. Sometimes maybe. Can we leave the poison here when we go home? This is the question that needs to be asked. <laughs> Do you have a good Borax guy? <laughs> <laughs> now I love the image of Tom wandering over to some guy's desk and being like, Dave, I don't know if you heard, but uh, Steve is sick this week. So um, we're going to give you Monday and Tuesday off. Well, no, I feel fine. I know. You feel yeah. fine now. So we're going to give you Monday and Tuesday <laughs> off. Uh, <laughs> get ahead for that. <laughs> ha, all right, we're all going to die. You want to talk about a new story? Sure. Let's is it, talk is about it a new story. uplifting? It's it is not uplifting at oh. all. Damn it. It's oh, not uplifting at all. We're going to get I I promised then... I promised some good news. It's not yet. It's not right. now. Okay. Okay, next up in headlines. Yeah. Russia is definitely about to invade <laughs> Ukraine. Yeah. <laughs> and possibly this is a world war that's about to happen. I don't Neat. know. Neat. Well, we've got great systems to protect ourselves from accidents if something kicks Yeah, you know, we learned all about that. Yeah, it's a uh, fail safe. Can't, can't go wrong. <laughs> Don't worry about it. We're, we're going to be fine. So Russia's mad because they heard Ukraine might become part of NATO and then it'd be harder to like take their stuff and bully them around. They want NATO to promise that they won't take on Ukraine or any other former Soviet states. They've amassed 100,000 troops right next to the border. And NATO was like, stop, you're obviously setting up to invade another country. And Russia was like, no, we're just conducting this random drill. That's our business. Not touching, can't get mad. That's the situation. <laughs> well, it's in Ukraine. To be, to be fair to Russia, it is in the Ukrainian constitution that they have an expressed desire to join NATO. NATO, however, has never said, cool story, come on board Ukraine. So this is all part of like, Vladimir Putin's insane obsession with the Ukraine. And he's been obsessed with the Ukraine kind of forever. Like it's like a girl he asked out once and she said no. And he keeps like showing up to the coffee shop where she works and just sitting in the corner with his laptop <laughs> pretending he's writing a book, but he's not writing a book. He's just staring creepily over the edge of the. I got to stop going to that coffee shop. I guess. Okay. <laughs> stop at coffee shop. And part of that creepiness was some hacking, too. So oh, yeah. apparently Russian hackers hacked the shit out of Ukraine recently. They did this like four years ago, five years ago, really big. And again, recently, a bunch of visitors to Ukrainian government sites, they, they went on the site and they got a message that said it was written in three different languages, U Ukrainian, Russian and Polish. And it said all your personal data has been uploaded to the public network and destroyed I don't know how those two things <laughs> work together, <laughs> Feels but apparently like that's what happened. Step. Sure. It also says all information about you has become public. Be afraid and expect the worst. <laughs> this is for your past, present, and future. I'm going to keep coming to this coffee shop all the time. It's like, it's like yeah. really terrifying, just like Tom said. Well, and underneath that, it also said all of your base are belong to us. So. <laughs> yeah. Be afraid, expect the worst has been my motto since 2021. Okay. <laughs> just 2021, Cecil. Really? Oh, March yeah. of 2021. That's been your open motto. 2020. It was a, 2020. It was a secret 2020. motto sure. since 1992. <laughs> the weird thing about Putin is that America is so divided as a country that we're like, hey, um, guys, I'm sorry, the crazy um, 
leader of Russia who made up his own kind of karate and makes all of his bodyguards fight him to a knockout in order to work for him. He's amassing troops at the border. And then he just sends out a tweet that's like, America killed all the Native Americans for all the land you're on. And we just start wrestling around with each other. And he's like, great, that'll keep them busy for another seven months. <laughs> if you could stop choking me for a second, he just poisoned a British journal. No, it's okay. You're choking. You're choking me. It's fine. <laughs> It's okay, fine. you guys, I, I do have to ask this question. What is the current over under on whether or not he rides a polar bear into battle on the first day? I <laughs> oh, think that'd it's be so amazing. Has he it's, never done that? Shirtless, of course. <laughs> shirtless. I, shirtless Vladimir Putin is going to be riding into battle day one, leading the charge into the Ukraine. <laughs> A hundred percent. Polar bears are a little thin nowadays, Tom. I'd go with a grizzly. I don't know. Oh, they I, have you seen them? Oh. Have you seen them in they're the, just, the just, sad, oh, sad man. images of polar bears? Sorry, I'm bringing the show down. I apologize, <laughs> guys. Yeah. I'm Can sorry. We were talking about World War Three. <laughs> we were trying to be positive, Cecil, <laughs> yeah. about World War Three. Can I tell a story about Vladimir Putin that I think about all the time? Please. It, yeah, but I'm I'm weirded out that you think about Vladimir Putin all the time. I think about it all the time. So during the siege at Stalingrad, um, a woman became so emaciated that she fell down in the middle of the street and a body loader picked up her body, her emaciated body, and started to load her onto the cart because uh, he thought she was dead, thought she would starve to death. Uh, but then she whispered, no, I'm alive, I'm alive. So he took her home and he just kind of nursed her back to health with the little food that she had. That was um, Vladimir Putin's mom. Yeah, that's his yeah. mom. And Joe Biden had a stutter as a kid. That's why we're going to lose because Vladimir Putin's <laughs> mom was like, hey, remember when your dad tried to load me onto the body cart? And Joe Biden's mom was like, you can do it. Say your T's from the top of your mouth, Joey. <laughs> we're going it. to oh, lose. God we're going it. to lose. <laughs> I do have to point out that this the timing of all of this is the most Russian timing ever. So troops are massing at the border of the Ukraine, and all of this is kicking off, and it's beginning to escalate. But there is a clock that is running right now, and I'm not even kidding, and it is a mud-based clock. Because if they're going to invade the Ukraine, no shit. They have to invade while the ground is frozen enough for troops and, like, transport and tanks and stuff to <laughs> mud the, or not, not get so stuck in the muddy. fucking mud and yep. drive over there when it warms up they have to put their saber rattling on pause <laughs> for real so part of the like escalation is a mud relate this is so russian it's fucking ridiculous <laughs> this is this is like your friend being mud and holding you back at a bar yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Salt, fun fact salting your sidewalk in the ukraine right now treason actual treason <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I get the hacking thing. Like theoretically, I get how that's an advantage. You know, if you're you're, you're messing with stuff, you know, they messed with the colonial pipeline. That's an example that happened here. But there's also a bunch of spy stuff happening. Putin's literally a former KGB agent. He's doing spy stuff all the time. But I don't know what that looks like now. I actually tried to look it up, but I guess this makes sense. They don't just like post spying. You techniques couldn't online. find what I could find. Find. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you go by how to find spy. It. Yeah, what nuts. do you guys think modern spying looks like? What's your day to day? Like, is there? Are you like peering around corners and shit? Like, <laughs> how does that work? Now? Well, so far it's fucking Madison Cawthorn once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a really easy honeypot. That was just like, oh, you just I just put honey down and you dove on it. Okay. <laughs> I, okay. I don't know the answer to that, but I do know that there is a non-zero chance that it involves poisoning someone's underpants. Like, So that's yeah, a weird okay. world to live in, to be looking at someone's drawers and being like, all right, this is not what I trained for. This is I am for to be leading. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I don't know what it includes, but I know what it doesn't include. So when I was a kid, I grew up on, on Get Smart, and it almost certainly doesn't include talking into your shoe, like picking your <laughs> shoe up. <laughs> And talk. It doesn't include that. I know that for sure. Honestly, if Joe Biden just pulls off a shoe at the next conference and <laughs> he's like, talking "Hello, to yes. what's that? Oh, it's it's Jesus, everybody." He says, "Oh, Joe's doing a great job. I love you. Give me big kisses, mwah, mwah. I'd be like, "Sure, sure." Yeah, no, and I mean, then I would even be then I'd retweet no. the Occupy Democrats article that's like, "Why Joe Biden talking into his shoe is a great sign for democracy." <laughs> <laughs> I think the problem is. We don't know what spying is anymore because there's no more secrets, right? Like, keep in mind, 
a good third of our government tried to overthrow itself publicly on Twitter. And a year later, we're like, I don't know who deactivated all the panic buttons, guys. Sometimes those things just don't fucking work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to lose. We're definitely going to lose this thing. Yep. yep. It's not good. No. Okay, I've got some good news. You good ready? News. We're, we're oh, going to say okay, some good go. news. Oh, this is good goodness. stuff. Sure Next up, Heath. Yes. Is it pirate related? Because I, I is like pirate. Little... Yes, Eli Bosnick. Okay. Hey. Look into my heart. It's very pirate related. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Oathkeeper's leader and Walmart pirate Stuart Rhodes <laughs> Yar. got charged with seditious conspiracy. Oh, it is great news. That's a great name for a pirate ship, too, by the way. Seditious conspiracy. <laughs> Amazing yes. name for a pirate ship. Oh. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. He got charged with conspiracy, for sure. I hope they read it like that. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it. Yeah, he's a domestic terrorist, blah, blah, blah. But mostly, I want to talk about his physical appearance. We're already starting to do it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I pasted a couple pictures in yes. here. There he is. That's a real person. I, I picture, I see him in my head every day. It's crazy. <laughs> Since when are all of the right-wing villains now just like fat G.I. Joe villains? Yeah, like, like it's, it's all of a sudden you're just gonna see like Serpentor is gonna show up and he's let himself go and you're just like yeah. you're not even really surprised. <laughs> yeah, it's like Cobra Kai got a really good deal on doing all their meetings at Old Country Buffet for six years, <laughs> and they just hello Joe. And it's like wow. Cobra Commander, did you lose a foot to diabetes? <laughs> yes, but that won't stop me from... <laughs> <sighs> Sorry, COVID really took it out of me. I got the... <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we also talk about the fact that this dude literally started an organization called the Oath Keepers, and he's now being charged with treason. <laughs> That's pretty fucking great. It feels good. You gotta admit, feels right? good. It feels That's good. That's like if we accidentally destroyed Wikipedia, the website, we'd be like, all right, come on, everybody, no, you no, get no. it. <laughs> I, I kind of hope he also gets charged at some point with perjury just for, like, lying under oath. That would also be yeah. kind of delicious. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I gotta add one other little detail to this story. According to the complaint, Rhodes and his stupid team, they think they're spies. They really think they're spies. And they're emailing about their plan. They literally conspired to go to Washington, D.C. and be part of this whole thing. And they were keeping it secret from the feds by using cursive in their heads. <laughs> Seriously, this is real. Yeah. This is in the complaint. One of his team wrote an email to their group that said, Okay, we only need to do this for important info like locations, identities, specific ops planning. And he attached a photo to the email of a piece of notebook paper that said, secure comms test in cursive. And, <laughs> and right after that, in the regular text body of the email, he mentions the specific location of their next ops planning meeting. But that was their plan, was to have cursive photos in email to to avoid getting caught and okay. this is all in the complaint the from pro the feds, move to is clear. to is to put it in cursive and pig latin that's the there, pro move. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the code they can't break but you okay wait right now gun to your head who here could do a cursive g none of us absolutely <laughs> none well, of I us think I, could. Absolutely. Wait, here. I got a pen and paper i'm gonna try it young and oh not. i did it get out of here I now did now it. google cursive g and no, see that you, how no, it, it looks like it looks like a uterus or something it's got like fallopian tubes it does, i don't know it's got a little do flippity swirl at the top and then like a sharp upward on the right there's it, no way you just made a cursive g tom i feel no like i did way on this. That's i got in a lot man. of trouble for not having good handwriting from my i feel i feel like i've got this <laughs> locked down now can, can i shift a little bit here for a second i want to ask you guys a question you got an eye patch, right? Let's see. You got an eye patch. That's just Yarr, tragic. Right? Something tragic happened. You got an eye patch, but you also wear glasses. Why not opt for eye patch monocle rather than eye patch glasses? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I, I mean, feel it's like sophisticated. It's, you know, yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's the detachment issue, right? Like you, oh god, okay, this one covers. This one helps me see. Like that's got to be confusing. <laughs> you mix them up. Which one goes left? Which one goes right? Also, how is it not all seditious conspiracy, even if you showed up? I know that the answer is like these guys planned it ahead of time, but I guess I feel like if you just spontaneously try to overthrow the government, that kind of counts too. Like that's not just <laughs> trespassing. <It's> not <laughs> right. 
I'm never what? having a bad day, and then I just like drive down to City Hall, and I'm like, I am the mayor now. <laughs> <laughs> and if I did, I don't think they'd be like, look, we've all had I am the mayor now days. Am I right? Let's let him go. Let's just, it's fine. Look, there seems just like a wide gulf between trespassing and seditious conspiracy, and we're not doing a lot of meat in the middle here. <laughs> okay, one last thing about this story that I have to mention, because it's so fucking amazing. This wasn't necessarily the Oath Keepers, but it was the January 6th terrorist people. Many of them were caught because they called the lost and found yes. for objects that they had left. Oh my behind. God. Yes. I read this story. This is amazing. They called Nancy Pelosi's office Please, like, can I can't imagine? find my hat. Imagine if they were successful. Like, the, the, the world would be run by these guys then. <laughs> I've got some terrible news for you, Cecil. Yeah. <laughs> can you imagine if Russian spies were this way? Yes, hello. I have lost my polar bear. <laughs> Is having saddle on polar bear very unusual? <laughs> Easy to note is my polar bear. <laughs> Meanwhile, Madison Cawthorn is getting married to a polar bear. <laughs> <laughs> to heaven to hold. <laughs> All right, next up in the headlines, let's do another story. Let's talk about GOP Senator Roger Marshall <laughs> getting called a <laughs> moron <laughs> by Andy <laughs> Fauci <laughs> during a Senate hearing. Oh my God. Getting into a snit about it. And now he's introducing a spite bill called the Fauci Act. It's <laughs> so the background. It's so good. If you haven't heard this story, here's a little background. In the hearing, Marshall is asking Fauci to disclose his financials. Uh, apparently, Marshall's trying to get that. He, he told one of his aides to go get that information. That aide is apparently kind of stupid, couldn't find it. So Marshall decided it's a big conspiracy by big tech mm -hmm. to hide Fauci's information somehow. So he asks Fauci, yes or no, will you disclose your financial information? And Fauci explains the almost exact words, wow, you're an idiot. My financials have been public <laughs> for like 37 years. What are you talking about? And the hearing has to move on because the chair of the hearing is like, yeah, that's that's true. He, he just t told you like a, a really good answer. You're kind of dumb. We're moving on. And as they move on, <laughs> Fauci's hot mic picks him up saying, moron. Jesus <laughs> <fucking Christ. laughs> his, his mic picks him up saying exactly, quote, what a moron. <laughs> <laughs> so good. OK, I, before we talk about the Fauci Act and how stupid it is, can we talk about Anthony Bethesda Fauci's descent into madness over the last two years. <laughs> yes. Because look, over the last year, we've all had a tough time during COVID, right? We've all changed in ways we're not proud of. Maybe you gained a little pandemic weight. I would argue no one has lost more fucks than Anthony <laughs> Fauci, who at this point just shows up to tell Rand Paul to fuck himself. <laughs> if he starts throwing rolled up pieces of paper at Rand Paul the next year, I'm going to be like, we did it, everybody. We broke the guy who made it through the entire AIDS crisis. <laughs> He's just in the background being background yell guy for everything. Just, boo, fuck you. You're all dumb. We're all going to die. I told you how we could stop this. It's your fault. We were talking about this on our show, and, and Tom mentioned this, and it's so true. It's like, we don't deserve Fauci. We just mm -mm. don't deserve him. Mm -hmm. Like, he's he's a public servant. He's been he's been up there grilled constantly. They're just, like, making shit up at this point, just trying to grill him in front of, in front of people so that they can say to their constituents, look at how hard I am on Fauci, and look at, you know, donate to my campaign. I mean, he even called Rand Paul out recently to say, look, it says, like, fire Fauci, and then there's a donate button right next to it. So <laughs> We just don't deserve this guy. He's been a, he's been a you know a a public servant trying to help us throughout this terrible pandemic, and we're just like nah, man. Let's just keep putting him up there and making him angry. We're just gonna keep poking him with a stick in front of Congress forever. <laughs> yes, what we need to do, and I think we're all in agreement here, is we need to stop having any good politicians. We need to go full Madison Cawthorn, right? Like the guy who replaces Fauci should be that kid who got kicked out of your science class for putting the dissecting frog in his mouth. That's our Fauci. Right? Yes. I don't know. Did you guys try drinking your own butt juice? <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> like he's wearing a monster energy hat. They keep asking him to take it off. 
That's who we need as a country. Yes. It's it's not sad that we have terrible people running our country. It's sad that those people are surrounding one or two good public servants who still believe in the old America. <laughs> just just Afout sitting next to Thanos on that sheep planet being like, you're right. You know what? This is nice. This is, this is actually very <laughs> lovely. Do you think that Roger Marshall was like super proud of himself for using Fauci oh, yes, as an acronym? He was. <laughs> Financial accountability for uniquely for uniquely compensated individuals. Fauci nailed it. Yeah. Oh, oh I'm absolutely. not taking the Monster Energy hat off. Nailed it. hundred <laughs> percent. So he clearly he got into his big snit and he like <laughs> went home. He got called a moron and he's all angry and he typed up Fauci act. I'm going to type the Fauci act and he like nailed this dumb acronym. <laughs> and let's be super clear about the problem that he is solving. The problem that he's solving is not that like. Fauci's financial disclosures are unavailable. It's that he couldn't Google them. That's right. it. That's yeah. the yeah. problem that he saw because we have descended into a world where even our Congress people are like, look, if I can't Google it, I'm all out of fucking ideas. Google's the only way to know stuff. We've all understood <laughs> that. God damn. Without seriously, it's this true. is the problem we're so trying to solve is sometimes information doesn't appear on the first page of your Google search heading and you gave up and didn't know what else to do. And the whole point of the Fauci Act, again, it's the financial accountability for uniquely compensated individuals. It's so, so stupid. stupid. That's not what uniquely means. God damn it. <laughs> but every, every, they're all compensated in money. What are you talking about? <laughs> but the whole I'm point of the act you is... You pick something for you. You find something for you. I can't find anything. <laughs> yeah, there's not that many you words, asshole. Yeah, there that's, are, man. That's because his aide would, like talked him down for an hour from ugly. <laughs> Financial? <laughs> ugly. We're not, we can't call him ugly in the bill. We can. He called me a moron. A, a moron. I'm not a moron. Very smart. Yeah. My bar <laughs> trivia team is in eighth place, Anthony. Eighth. <laughs> Top ten. Out of ten. Yeah. Yeah. But, but the whole, just to be clear, the whole point of this dumb act is to make already public information extra public now. Mm -hmm. So literally the guy who is called a moron got mad and then did that to prove that he's not a moron that's what happened <laughs> wow the best the best reply tweet on this uh, this fauci act is the first one it says if you don't want a prominent scientist to call you a moron in front of a u.s committee don't be a moron in front of a US <laughs> 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 here's the question do you think fauci is realizing that there's no rules right like is he gonna show up in a tank top to the next one and just be like <laughs> What's up, knuckle fuckers? What do you want to make up today? Huh? I'll tell you what. First one who stands up, they get like a three-minute roast. Everyone else has to share. <laughs> yes, I am drunk. Oh, man. Okay. I promised some good news. I think we got a little bit yeah. already. Oh, yeah. But uh, I've got one more. Okay. It's bad news, but it's got a kernel of good news that is delightful to me. Anti-vaxxers are drinking pee. <laughs> that's happening. <laughs> sure. That's a real thing that's happening now. Seriously, a I, I'm going to say the word prominent, but you know, go fuck yourself. But yes, a prominent in whatever relative sense anti-vaxer named Christopher Key put out a video recently. It has maybe half a million views now, something like that. And he said, "Yes, this is real. Urine therapy, and I do mean drinking your own urine, is the antidote to COVID. Anti-vaxers are drinking pee." See, now, when we we covered a similar story a couple days ago, and in that story, they had said that they were drinking the pee to counteract the vaccine. So yeah. like w what Tom said earlier with the with the bath where like they said that you could just like drop some fucking salts in a bath and then you counteract the vaccine. Like we're totally fine with them doing that. Right. We're, we're like, hey, man, you want to <laughs> drink a fucking tall glass of urine after you get the vaccine? Do what you want. That's you. You go do you. But if they're doing it instead of that, now I'm a little worried. Like, I wasn't as worried before when Same. we covered the story. But now if you're like, <laughs> no, I'm doing that as a curative for COVID, now I'm more worried. You know how they offer you milk and cookies after you give blood? They should offer you urine after you get <laughs> 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 vaccinated. I always wonder when these kind of stories come up. Because there are, there are perverts out there. And hey, no kink shaming. Everyone's a different kind of pervert. But there are, I like to drink piss perverts. Do you think they're ever like, ah, they're fucking ruining it? No. <laughs> no, Cheryl. 
because Mistress Ming is going to give me pee to drink tonight, and I'm going to be like, is she doing it because of the COVID thing? Like, I'm all in my head. <laughs> I can't jerk off. I can't put a bottle up my ass. This has wrecked my week. This has wrecked my week. <laughs> but, like, which urine? My urine, is, it's like, it's not the, is it like, you got to grab that, like, morning pee? Should you, like, avoid asparagus for a couple of days? Should you, like, or work or out? Or get some asparagus in there. I kind of like that smell. Well, yeah, oh, what, Jesus what's... Christ. You're Hitler. I, I feel like it's not all <laughs> the same. It's got to have different properties. Okay, question. What's the pro move? Do you just, like, do you dunk the urinal cake in there, or do you just pour <laughs> it over it? Oh. <laughs> like a biscuit? Like a scone? No, no there's a secret... <laughs> The secret is you you put a fork through the urinal cake and ah. you dunk it with the fork so your fingers don't yeah, get wet. Now you can have your urinal cake and eat it too. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo, sir. Well done. Oh, God. Wow. God. Just good. Good for them. Good for I them. I got to say, my favorite little side effect of this is it's, it's watching all these urologists make tweets that are like, ah, oh, all right. I can't believe I have to do this. <laughs> Don't drink urine to cure COVID or other reasons, except maybe the sex thing, if you're really into that. Please don't do that. I'm a urologist. I feel like I was ethically required. God damn it. This is my life now. The be- There's the best- so many of those out there. The best part is, though, is that the urologists are all, I, I don't know why, maybe they took some kind of second Hippocratic oath. They all have to admit that urine isn't poison when they do this. So they're like, while urine isn't poison, it is not a good. And I want to know who in their office was like, um, doctor, maybe you should point out that urine's actually not poison. It's like, Steve, don't. I don't want to. S- you should point out that it's not poison. <laughs> it's actually venom. T- Shut up. I hate you so much. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's not technically poison, but it very often is containing stuff that could fuck up your health. So you're not really supposed to drink it. It's yeah. a it's a waste product. That's how uh, the body I was works. gonna say the same waste products. We could just have a category called don't eat waste products. They're waste. The word waste yeah. is right in there. It's right in there. Right. Yeah. I mean, we shit's don't... not poison directly, but. Don't eat shit usually also, That's right? Shit's bad... not poison directly, but don't eat shit also is the very unpopular sequel to <laughs> Everybody Poops. <laughs> <laughs> it's at the back of Barnes & Noble. You got to know a guy, do a handshake to get it. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, we did it. Great job. Our psyop worked and we made him drink pee. I think we should be proud of that. Yep. <laughs> Here's my question. What can we get him to do next? We got him to drink pee. We could get him to do something crazier, right? Yeah, like, what right. do we do next? What's our next thing? What if we do... Can we go for a hand as bigger than your face? I think we can. <laughs> <laughs> as a nation? That's the new COVID test. Oh, God. If you could fist your ass, you're 100% immune to COVID. 100% immune. <laughs> if you could fist your own ass. Don't tease me, Cecil. I just, I just got a booster. Jesus Christ. I side effects every time. That requires a level of stretchability on both like your limbs and your ass that I just don't know is possible. It's all about breathing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, on that delightful note, I think we're going to close it out. I appreciate how classy this has been. I do, too. Right, yeah. Me, too. Tom and Cecil, thank you so much for joining us. Much appreciated. Thanks for having us on, man. It's been a pleasure. Pleasure's ours. And of course, a big thanks to all the listeners who liked us on Facebook, followed us on Twitter, and sent us feedback on the other various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening, and please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, please feel free to send us gifts of money at our donation page at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like all our generous new donors who will have their genitals complimented next time around. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available on Apple Music, Stitcher, all those other podcast apps, or the deep web. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He is the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time catchphrase sign off.
The preceding podcast is a production of Puzzle and the Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved. Sure, we have 30 seconds to tell you that drivers who switch to Progressive could save big. But then what? Well, radio has been called theater of the mind. So let's tell a story with sound effects. <laughs> Wow, it's like I was in the story. Almost makes me forget this was supposed to be about saving big with Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates.